Hello student, in our previous lecture we have seen stress corrosion and we have told that the most common example of stress corrosion will be your season cracking and costing and development. Today we will be talking on both the uh, examples and let us start with season cracking. Before we actually go in detail, let me tell you a story. Uh, there was a story in England. There had been a very big room for keeping horses inside. And all th around the actually room from inside, they used to use, in fact, brass cartridge during monsoon session. Once monsoon time was over, it was found that all the brass cartridge developed some kind of cracks. This problem was first detected in 1921 and the scientist started working on that and ultimately it was detected that ammonia present in horse urine was actually responsible for this phenomena and it came in contact with copper in the crest area and uh, producing cupra ammonium ion which is water soluble and thus this kind of specific kind of corrosion took place. Actually, from name itself, you can tell that it is uh, absolutely seasonal kind of uh, corrosion, and uh, this for uh, this kind of corrosion to take place, there are three essential to be all susceptible material, and here it will be, as you know, copper and its alloy. Number two will be your specific chemical species. Here it is ammonia, I have told you. And number three will be your residual stress. These three are the essential component which will be required for your season cracking. Actually, susceptible material, any kind of particle made of copper or its alloy, if they come in contact with ammonia, then this kind of problem will appear. And obviously, the structure must have residual stretch in it. If it is a pure compound, that there is no residual stress, then this kind of problem will not appear. And therefore, all these three components are required for season cracking to take place. Now, next point is actually, uh, you understand that, well, mechanism, how does it react? If we talk about that, actually copper will react with ammonia to produce and this compound is water soluble. And if anybody asks you how can you trace that it is season cracking, as I have uh, I want to tell you, it is characterized by a deep brittle crack. It will have a deep brittle crack and uh, which will ultimately penetrate inside the crack till there is a big fracture. As a result of which any metallic structure having this kind of problem will break down suddenly. And that is why we have to be very very careful about season cracking. Now if we talk about how to control season cracking, the number one will be, most important thing is that in case of severe problem, uh, we can actually apply aniline. What is aniline? I have explained in the previous lecture. After making the article made of brush, it should undergo aniline so that residual stress can be released. And number two, we have to actually avoid ammonia from any environment if any article made of brush is being used. And number three, we have to use that kind of material which will be non-reactive in such environment. By adopting this kind of precautions, we can control season cracking. This is all about your season cracking. Now, we will be talking on caustic embrittlement. This is actually a special type of stress corrosion 
which is having a very industrial impact implications all over the world. You know boiler. You know boiler is a device which is being used to produce steam and ultimately to generate electricity. And therefore the raw material we are going to use in boiler will be water. And we know that. Say it is a boiler. It is made of mild steel. You know mild steel for carbon steel having 2.1% carbon and rest is iron. That is known as mild steel. So if this is the boiler, it is made of mild steel. You are using water as raw material. Now what happens? We have to see. All of you will believe, uh, agree with me. Water being used in boiler, if it either contains sodium hydroxide as such, or sodium hydroxide is there, not there, but sodium carbonate is there, then what will happen? Let us see. If sodium carbonate is there in water, during heating, it will undergo splitting like that, 2 Na plus, plus 2 CO3 minus minus water at the same time will be spitted to produce two molecules of this and OH minus. Now, due to interionic force of attraction, there will be H2CO3 plus sodium hydroxide. As all of us know that H2CO3 is a weak acid, but sodium hydroxide is a strong base. And therefore, it will prevail in the solution, in the water. I want to mean the water being used in your boiler as raw material, if it contains sodium hydroxide or as such sodium hydroxide is not there but it is sodium carbonate is there. How sodium carbonate will come? You know that during treatment of water in a LS process we use sodium carbonate. In that case there is every possibility, not possibility, is the reality. During boiling sodium carbonate will undergo this kind of splitting as a result of which these two acid and base will be produced, being weak acid, it will go into solution and sodium hydroxide will prevail. As a result, your water will become alkaline. Now, as I have told you, here also, there are essential three essential conditions. Number one is, the susceptible material that is your mild steel or carbon steel, sorry, uh, yeah. number two, will your specific chemical component, this is your sodium hydroxide and number three will be your residual stress. You see, your boiler is made of mild steel, one condition is fulfilled. Sodium hydroxide, I have told you, the water being used over there, it may be possible the water being used directly contains sodium hydroxide or it may not contain sodium hydroxide as such. But there is a pre possibility during treatment of water we have used sodium carbonate and therefore it is possible water may contain sodium hydrocarbonate. And during hydro uh, uh, boiling we have seen sodium carbonate will in turn make your water alkaline by converting into sodium hydroxide. The two points are satisfied and if there is any stress, I have told you, where there will be possibility of stress, bend, joint, but there, there are bends in the boiler. And therefore there is every possibility that there are hairline cracks, which cannot be seen by open eye. And if it is there, if any kind of hairline cracks is there in the boiler from inside, now this sodium hydroxide will infiltrate into the crack by capillary action and slowly and slowly water from the crack will go off and concentration of sodium hydroxide will start getting increased. As a result, the distressed area with high concentration of sodium hydroxide will become a renote, making rest part cathode, electrochemical cell is formed and sodium electrolyte is available. Now reaction will start. 
What will happen? You understand that? Sodium hydroxide will react with iron to produce sodium ferrate. And slowly and slowly, <coughs> iron will go into the solution in the form of this oxide. This is all about your actually how the problem is created. Next, how you can control this costing and environment. I have told you, we have to ensure that water being used is free from sodium hydroxide. But at the same time, we have to ensure that water being used here should be free from sodium carbonate. But you will say, how can we do that? For water purification, we have to use sodium carbonate. In that case, we can use sodium phosphate in place of sodium carbonate. What happens if we use sodium phosphate for water purification? This molecule will get inside the hairline crack and block the hairline crack as a result of which sodium hydroxide, even if it is there, will not be able to come in contact with iron as a result, no reaction will be there. Number two, we can use tannin or lignin if they are used in water, they have the property of getting in touch in the hairline crack by blocking the hairline crack. As a result, they will also prevent sodium hydroxide to come in contact with iron. As a result, reaction will be stopped. And number three, which is very, very important in other situation, we can use also sodium sulfate. If we use in, so, uh, in a small percentage of sodium sulfate in water, they have the tendency to block the hairline crack and thus preventing sodium hydroxide to come in contact with iron as a result. Caustic embrittlement can be stopped. These are uh, major steps we can take to control caustic embrittlement. This is about, all about your costing embrittlement. Today we have discussed two different mechanisms. Number one is your schism cracking, where we have seen it is mainly because of your uh, copper article and ammonia, uh, which is very, very dangerous because that type of actually collusion cannot be uh, seen initially, and there will be this sudden failure due to the fracture causing very huge loss. At the same time, uh, if we talk about caustic amplitude, which is very, very dangerous in boiler, we know that uh, in mecha mechanical engineering and electrical engineering, boiler is widely used for steam generation, being used for electricity generation ultimately. So the cost of a boiler being is in crore, uh, it is expected it should go for a very long period of time. But in case, as we know, because there will be some bend joint in the boiler and this bend and joint will make that area very, very stressed. In that situation, if sodium hydroxide is directly present in water being used in boiler as raw material or as such, sodium hydroxide is not there, but if sodium carbonate is there, it will undergo hydrolysis producing ultimately sodium hydroxide, which will make your water alkaline. And in this situation, if there is hairline crack, they will get in contact with over there. And with time, it will get evaporated, but sodium hydroxide will be concentrated there. And now the stressed area with high level of concentration of caustic hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, it will be, 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 behave anodic, making rest of the part cathodic, and electrochemical cell is completed because of the presence of a suitable electrolyte, and corrosion will take place, and iron will get actually dissolved in the form of ferrous. Uh, we have told you sodium ferrate. And this kind of corrosion is known as caustic embrittlement, and best way to control caustic embrittlement, we have seen, we have, to, we have to ensure that water being used should be free from sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate. In that case, we can use actually sodium phosphate, which will actually block the hairline cracks, thus preventing the infiltration of sodium hydroxide through the hairline cracks. Lignin and lignin can also be used, and they will 
I mean, work in the same way at the same time. Sodium sulfate can also be used, which has a tendency to block the hairline crack and thus actually uh, blocking the infiltration of aquatic so soda. This is all about your actually season cracking and caustic embrittlement. I do believe that you might have uh, understood everything. In case of any doubt, please get it uh, noted. In the next lecture, 